second chapter, verses 1 through 11. And we're going to use for the subject, the moment they knew. The moment they knew. Amen. I'm not going to mess with Mr. Hayes this morning. Amen. That sure was tempting. Amen. But the moment they knew. Father, we praise you. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for such a cool day, being able to feel it. And then God, you're so amazing. You didn't let it rain where we couldn't drive on ice. You put your smile in the sky. And for that, God, we say thank you. And then, oh, Father, we got up and bones may have been hurting just a little bit of feeling this way, but Lord, we thank you that you decided in your infinite wisdom and in your infinite counsel that you would leave us on this side one more day. Now, Father, give us your people, your children, the mindset. Since you've been so good, today we won't complain. Because you've been so good, we won't murmur. Because you thought so much of us to give us another day. There's no way we're going to let rocks cry out for us. So now, Lord, we ask you, move James out of the way. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be holy and acceptable in thy sight. And Father, shake us and let us hear a word from thee. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The moment they knew. Mm -hmm. And I was going to use Mr. Alex, but I'm going to let him make it. <laughs> but I remember coming out to lunch at Yates a friend of mine he told me he said got a young lady I want you to meet now I, I had another girlfriend <laughs> don't judge me <laughs> I had a little girlfriend on the side but he knew I wasn't serious about the girls. He said, I got somebody I really want you to meet. I said, man, I ain't interested in meeting nobody. He said, but, I said, but I'll go and take a peek. <laughs> I ain't gonna take me 10 minutes, it'll be about five, 10 minutes to get there and take a peek. And if, if I ain't peeking, I'm letting them go. So we get there and she's sitting with her back against this pillar on the porch. She had on white striped pillow cushions. Not to get with that's when you know, you know. And she had on a white polo shirt, had a half pulled back and a long ponytail. And she had on some, what they call, no disrespect, net, white girl tennis shoes. I said that I looked at it, my heart kind of skipped a beat. I didn't want my friend Chris to know, but I said, he didn't pique my interest here. <laughs> Out of all the young ladies I ever met, I could not tell you what they were wearing 37 years ago when I first met them. I was too young to know that she would be my wife, but I knew there was something about this one. She was a little sassy. <laughs> Which was to be expected. Those people born in June, they got a mouth on them. Amen. <laughs> but, but, it, but there was something, Miss Angela, that day that grabbed me. And in your life, Think back on it. There was a moment you knew. I, I tell young ladies this all the time, and I hope you gentlemen here will help me that I don't look like a liar. It does not take a man all day to figure out if you want to be with you. Can I hear from the men? <laughs> <laughs> A man knows, for the most part, within three to six months, whether or not you're worth wasting any time on. And my daughter was, don't give me, don't give me children. 
She had this little guy, he just straight. I said, hey, 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 hey. Bro, I ain't trying to do nothing. There you go, daddy. I said, I've been that age. It don't take long to figure out if you eternal or you temporary. There's a moment in time that you know. I wish I could ask Miss Doris, but I ask at the church. <laughs> Take your mind back down memory lane. Yeah. Dr. Gilbert, there was a moment you knew, wasn't it? Dr. Gilbert said, yeah. Miss Janice, there was a moment that you knew, right? Work with me, be good. <laughs> Miss Tina, that was a moment. There's always a moment that you and I know that that's the one. Am I right about it, Miss Linda? Bring me to my first point. The setting. Because there's always a setting in place. There's always a setting. Ms. Marshall, there's always a setting, Miss Amy, where the violins are playing in your heart. You recognize there's something special about this moment and this time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus is invited to a wedding. Hmm. He's not a hermit hmm. like so many theologians and scholars and even pastors have tried to become, to get away from people, to keep the mystic. That's right. I mean, look, it's mysterious, but mm -hmm. Jesus hung out with the people. That's right. Mm -hmm. Jesus was sociable. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And many have thought to be Christian, you've got to isolate. Mm -hmm. I've even heard my friends who went through. Churches where they weren't allowed to go to football games. They weren't allowed to go to baseball games. They weren't not allowed to go bowling. One, one preacher told me, a friend of mine, he said, man, we came in from playing baseball. The pastor was in the church, and he looked down at our socks, and they were dirty. He said, y'all been out there sinning. I said, man, what were y'all doing, playing baseball? Some believe you cannot have an interaction with anybody, right. especially those who are not saved. That's it. That's right. But Jesus this morning hmm. is hanging out That's it. around a whole lot of folk mm -hmm. and they getting drunk. <laughs> this is Jesus' first sign. The miracle takes place in the setting Cana of Galilee. Jesus is invited to a wedding. And I like Jesus because he's like me. You invite me to a wedding, I don't come. I'm not going to leave at the reception. I got preacher friends, Miss, Miss Doris, so they picked that funny music. They, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Grab my wife, I'm gonna rub on and hug on her. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy the way. Yes, yes. Jesus did not leave. Yes, yes. He stayed right there. It was a celebratory moment, and what I love about Jesus, he knew how to celebrate. That's right. That's right. He's invited to a wedding, Brother Thompson, and he said, I'm going. Not only does he go, his mama's there, and the disciples are invited. But the Bible says something that catches me on the, in the first verse. On the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. But, but here's what I like about Jesus, because Jesus is like a lot of folks I know, Mr. Michael. Hmm. The way it started three days ago. Hmm. Because they celebrated a wedding reception for seven days. Jesus waits the third day to show up. And when he shows up, he shows up with his posse. Mm -hmm. They walk in like gang bangers. Yeah. Yeah. He's three days late, but he's on time. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say that one more time, Mr. Leary. He's three days late, yeah, but, he's but he's on time. Right. 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 And the third day, 
was symbolic because John speaks in spiritual symbolism. When John speaks, that's why his gospel is different because John will say something, but there's a meaning behind it. There's an undercurrent that you have to seek out. Yeah, yeah. The third day was symbolic of letting them know something great going to happen on the third day three years from now. Come on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just, just realize that three days, three years from now, that one at three, three years from now on the third day, yeah. Yeah. after they put me in the grave, I'm going to get up. Yes. And, and you thought I was something before I went to the grave. Yes. I didn't have all power when I went to the grave. Yes. But when I get up, yes. I'm going to have all power in heaven and in earth. Yes. So on the third day, Jesus shows up yes. to the wind. Bring me to my second point. Mm. This is a quick one. The situation. Because uh -huh. yeah. we got a situation. Yeah. <laughs> and anybody who had a relationship, yeah. there's always some tension. Yeah. Yeah. After the eyes stop making them goo goo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye, babe. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have some moments, Mr. Michael, where they just hang up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got some moments, Mr. Washington, laughing. You got some moments when you send the text, you don't get no answers. You know what I'm talking about, baby? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it. 
became a problem when we brought it from the east to the west. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Drinking wine, they did that all the time. And watch this, what does Jesus do? He tells her, Mama, you got it twisted. Mama, you should have known. You, you should have known, Mama. At 12 years old, I told you I must be about my father's business. It's your job, Mama, to give me, to, to raise me, and make sure I keep my focus on God, but I don't take orders per se like this. I'm 30 years old now. I don't take orders from you anymore. I have to hear from my father. Because if I do anything outside the will of my father, I have sinned and I cannot redeem man. Can I preach it like I feel it? You and I got to be careful. Because there are people close enough to us that's it, that's it. to pull us outside that's of the right. will of God. And, 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 and they're not trying to do so. There's no maliciousness on their part. The problem is yes. they see a situation and they believe you and I ought to be doing something. That's right. But every now and then, God has a plan that you and I are not aware of. Yes. And if we spend time praying, God will let us know, leave that alone. That's it. Because sometimes the best way to learn is to go through the thing. That's it. That's it. That's it. Some people learn, if there's two ways to learn that I've found, and there may be more than that. The first one is, some people can hear. They can hear your experience, experience your experience through you, and never go through it. That's a wise person. But then you got some dumb people. <laughs> because, because in the word wisdom, there's wise and dumb. Wise, dumb, wisdom. So watch this. So when you flip it, you got some people you can talk to. You can preach to them. You can show them the scars on your back. You can show them everything that you went through. And they'll still go and do the same thing. They'll tell you this. Well, you did it. <laughs> there are some things that people can cause us to do. I'm going to give you all an example. One person told me one time, not here at St. Paul, so don't look around St. Paul. <laughs> you too nice of a pastor. I said, well, what you going to do with the scripture that says the pastor ought to be gentle? Uh, what you going to do with it? Uh, I said, what you going to do with the, the Bible? The Bible says the pastor ought not be a striver. Yeah, yeah. One who fights. Yeah. I said, well, what you going to do with it? And they looked at me. Well, you don't need to be. I said, well, now, now, now what you want me to do? Do you want me to be like Jesus? I think you want me to be like everybody else. Yeah. What happens in Christendom is for the most part, yeah. we throw the Bible away. That's right. yeah. And we come up with our own standard yes. Yes. that so often is so far removed from God that we don't even resemble Jesus anymore. Yes. Yes. Jesus tells his mama, woman, not disrespectful when you look it up. He was letting her know, uh-uh. I'm 30 years old. I got to be about my father's business. I love you. I respect you. I'm with you. You remember at the cross he told John, John, thou mama. In other words, Jesus always looked out for her. But he had an assignment yeah. in this earth realm. And if he had listened to her and God was not in this, yeah, yeah. he would have sinned and could not have redeemed us. Thanks be to God yeah. that what Mary was saying was God's holy will. Yeah. She walks away because uh -huh. Dr. Finney, every mama know her son. That's right. She says, um, I hear you. She looked over at the boys and went, <laughs> whatever he tell you to do, just do it. And that's just like a mama walks. <laughs> and I'm sure Jesus said what I said. That's my mom. What can I say? Yeah. They walk off, she walks off, they're left with a situation still. Uh -huh. 
The key to success is doing what Jesus said. Yes. Yes. Jesus said, fill up stone pots. They were huge. They held 17 to 25 gallons of water. So take 34 half gallons of milk and pour it. That's how much was there. Huge. Jesus said, fill a thing of water, fill a little water. I'm sure they're looking at this much. I'm like, come on, man, now we can't. It's, we make wine for real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> putting all that water, we will mix all of this. I mean, <laughs> we putting all this water in the bottom. That's what I do. Jesus said, just fill it up. Fill it up. Bring me to my last point. The solution. The solution. She said, fill it up. And draw some out for the governor of the feast. Now, I didn't know who he was. I had to look him up. The governor of the feast was the equivalent of what we call a wedding planner. Okay. And so the reception, so he was, he or she was, it was a he. Yeah. You know, it was, it was that time. <laughs> no disrespect, ladies, but it was a man. <laughs> and his, his, his responsibility was to make sure the wedding reception went off without a glitch. I'm sure the wedding planner right now has thrown his fedora on the ground. He didn't kick that fedora all over the place because as they talk about this young couple, they're going to be talking about him. He didn't know how to plan. I ain't hiring him because he'll, he'll, he'll let you run out of wine. <laughs> he said, the first thing Jesus said, what I want you to do is, when you pour the water, like I told you to, not before, pour the water, dip into it, and give it to the wedding. Give it to the, the governor of the feast. The governor of the feast said this. I want you to hear what the governor of the feast said. Hear what I'm saying? Because this is going to mess up a lot of Christians. Now, Miss Janice, tell me if I'm lying. He said, he called the young couple over and he said, most times you serve the best wine at the beginning. But y'all didn't wait till everybody got drunk and served an even better wine. So what did Jesus do? I'm going to mess you up. What did Jesus do at a party when people was drunk? He gave them more wine. Yeah. I've heard people say, well, it was not any intoxication in the wine. I said, well, how did they get inebriated? I said, how did the governor of the feast come to the conclusion that they drunk? The process of taking the alcohol out of the liquid or out of the wine it took place with James Welch, hmm. a Jim Welch who makes the Welch's grape juice. Yeah, yeah. That's in around the 1700s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the first century, there was no way to take the alcohol out the vine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why Paul says, don't, don't drink too much wine. Yeah, yeah. And then Paul turned around and told Timothy, get you just a little bit preaching. <laughs> For your stomach's sake. <laughs> well, watch this. He says, tasted it, best wine you ever had. So what's the application? And I'm through. Because it's gotta be application, Ms. Dora. If not, the preacher just been talking. Yeah. What's the application? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Jesus takes our water. That we thought we made wine. And the only problem is for sure it lasted the joy. Because wine is equivalent to joy. The joy lasted a while. But then the joy ran out. Because if it didn't, we wouldn't be here this morning. I hear people talking about the good old days. They wasn't that good. Because if they were that good, I wouldn't be right here this morning. I'd still be back in, hanging out in the same places. Come on. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. When you became a woman, you put away childish things. So what did Jesus do for you and I? He took our lives, which is the water. Put his hand on us and made us wine. And because of that, we kept our joy. It doesn't mean that things have not happened. It does not mean that we have not gone through trials and tribulations. But through it all, we have kept our joy. 
So what's your job? What's my job as I close? Yes, Jesus. Stay drunk. Stay drunk. Hey! Hey! Stay drunk. Stay happy in the Lord. I don't care what's going down. Stay joyful in the Lord. Keep telling people the Lord is my shepherd. I share that with the Lord is the joy of my life. He said, uh, the Ecclesiastes says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Stay drunk, St. Paul. Every now and then you walk into your job. Stop. Stay drunk, stay drunk, stay drunk. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. The word of God for the people of God.